subscribe to the Danny Houston Podcast, man. Man, talk about uh, Chucky Trio, man. How y'all end up, you know, connecting, making that connection? A few people uh, was telling me um, that I need to check Chucky out. I, he need a manager. He really, you need to manage him. And uh, at the time, I had a few other people that I was managing, and I wasn't really thinking about getting, um, you know, responsible for somebody else at the time. So the artist that I was managing wanted a feature from Chucky. And we go to the studio, and Chucky gave him a verse and a hook, right? And both of them was fire. I'm like, God damn, this little motherfucker jamming. So my artist that I had, he was like, man, you need to manage him. I'm like, man, I might, I might have to sit down and talk to him. So me and him, we, we talked, and... Uh, I took on that, you know, responsibility with him, and what I saw was like a. It was so much. This boy got so much love and attention in a short period of time. We would be out, and like the Hispanic community loved him. We would be out somewhere, and they'd just be, Jay Trill, like he'd have made it, right? And I used to see that back in the day. You know, when people had them little one single songs, you know, and and you start getting that shine before you really get popping. Like, he reminded me of, like, that old school artist. Like, just natural. They love this little dude. He just had a star, a stardom about himself, you know. And he carried it well. He took care of his business. He was a bad motherfucker in the booth. Um, and, you know. I just hate that that shit happened to him. I really do. I hate that shit happened to him because he was at he was at that point where that next album was gonna be uh, the one that was gonna help him, you know, yeah. catapult his career. Cause I, I me he definitely wife, had the talent, bro. Like oh, yeah. he had that talent, bro. He had it. Yeah, he could sing. He could rap. He can. Um, he know how to make songs. He know how to make songs. He know how to put that shit together, man. And I used to sit in the studio and didn't have to say shit. Like, he would put that shit together on the production side, from the booth. Yeah, he was, he was a, he was a cold music, musician, you know, singer, a rapper, you know, putting the music together. He was a bad motherfucker. Yeah. Did you, you know, everything came out with the first 48 episode and all that. Did you know some of the things he had going on at that time? And never hollered and be like, hey, bro, we need to count. We got other shit going on. Man, I remember all that shit very clearly. When this shit happened, when he told me about it, we sat down at the studio, me, him, and his uncle. And he told me the story. And I looked at him in his face. And I said, you know I got a lot of love for you, man. But I don't believe you. Hmm. Cause he told me the story of what he wanted to put out there. I'm like, I don't believe it. So if I don't believe you, you think this nigga believe you? And not even if he don't believe you, or if he believe you. Wait, so he told you what really happened and then told you the way he no, wanted to betray, or he's just nah, not he told, he's not keeping it straight with you when he tell you. He told me, you. Bone, I'm telling you, man, I ain't, I ain't got nothing to do with that. How, okay, that. but wait, wait, how does this even come up, though? You you ain't got word that he might have been caught no, up? No, no, no. This was after, this was supposed to be, like, man, uh, somebody robbed us. Mm. Right? Somebody robbed us. They kidnapped me, man. Right? And when he told a story, let me show you something. So, if somebody robbed you, they going to take all your shit. You know? He still had his ear on when they found him. They supposed to have kidnapped him, right? I'm going to tell the story because this was my partner. The man gone. The word, whatever y'all heard in the streets. I'm going to tell the straight truth, you know? He made a move, and the move came back and bit him in his ass. And I hate that shit. He told me that. Somebody robbed him, right? He ain't had nothing to do with it. 
you know, this is right. This is when COVID just started, but the streets had crunk back up. Like niggas was getting money in the streets, and um, he wasn't no hustler like that. Like he was in a lane that he wasn't supposed to be in. You know what I'm saying? And um, he got caught up. He got caught up. He 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 made the wrong move. When you, when you called him out on it, did, did he never folded and say, "No, nah, that ain't." He stuck nah, to it. He stuck to it. He stuck to it, but yeah, I mean, I, I look, man, I'm a nigga from the streets, and what I do is evaluate people with the job that I do. When we going out of town, I gotta know who the fuck I'm going out of town to go do some business with. I don't know this nigga, but he say he got twenty thousand. He done sent the deposit. He answering the phone all the time. He taking care of business on the flights. He taking care of everything he's supposed to take care of. I kind of trust this nigga. When we land. Boom, he answered the phone. Okay, he, he gave me the back end. We good. That's good business. But once you start doing a little bullshit, yeah, shit, yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, so um, just hearing his story, thinking about it, no. Nah. So, you know, he was supposed to be paying the nigga back some of the bread to keep the shit, you know, Keep it at, cool, yeah. At, as cool as possible. And then he just stopped. Stopped. He was like, man, I can't see myself paying no nigga for no shit like that. I ain't had nothing to do with. Right? I was like, man, well, you better muscle up. You know what I'm saying? You better be ready. Because nigga ain't going to play about that type of shit, man. Niggas getting killed over $1,000, dollars man. You know what I'm saying? It's the motherfucking pandemic. So, you know. What made me stop letting Chucky do any shows was he had a show one night. Um, I can't remember what side of town it was on. But the whole time I had my pistol in my pocket, it was cold, and I had my hand on my pistol the whole night. When he pulled up, you know, he was deep, all that. Nigga don't give a damn about none of that shit. If you want your man, you're going to get your man. So when he pulled up, he do the show, after the show, and I'm riding home, and I'm like, nah, this ain't worth that, bro. Mm -hmm. It's not worth that to be. You got to move like this. You got out the streets to get away from that yeah, shit. Right, it, right. It's, it's not worth that, man. You know, I don't have nothing to do with what you did, but you're going to fuck around and get got at one of these shows. I talk to him just like this. I say, man, we're going to cancel any performances until we get this shit right. The reason why he was in Atlanta that night was because I booked him a show for the All Star weekend. He had a show the next day he was performing. I didn't know that the nigga lived in Atlanta who he had, who he got. I thought he was from Chicago. That's what you know, that's what I heard. But I also had heard that he was in the H looking for Chucky, right? So that's your thinking of shit, I'm gonna get you out of here. No, I just, I would just, yeah, you gonna do something out of the mm. city, right? But I, I I promise you, if I would've knew that was that man's city where he was living at, I wouldn't have did that. You know, I wouldn't have booked that shit. I wouldn't have did that. But that, and that's kind of like something that weigh on me a lot too because they never did tell me. They knew that the nigga was living out there. Never did tell me. You know? Yeah. Damn. So when you get the car, you already knew, like, man, this is just. It done caught up. Did you know exactly that that's what it was or you, or you so, didn't really know what, what, that, what might have happened at the time? He was supposed to be going to the studio that night and he went out to the club, right? So when he went out to the club instead of the studio, I turned my phone off. I said, I forgot to go to sleep. Woke up the next morning, turned my phone on, and that motherfucker just went to just going off. I'm like, what the fuck going on? I'm sorry. R.I.P. What? And I started seeing all this shit on social media. The news people calling me. Man, that was like the worst shit. That was the worst shit ever for me because I tried to prevent that. And that shit happened on something that I put him on. 
You know what I'm saying? So it weighed it weighed heavy on me. I, I told myself I wasn't gonna manage anybody still in the streets doing music because you can't mix the two. If you're doing something in the streets, you get jammed up or you do some slick shit in the streets, you promoting yourself with this music shit. You got to let people know I'm going to be here doing this and I'm over here and blah, blah, blah. You can't mix the two. I'm telling anybody that's paying attention, any artist, if you want to be a rapper, singer, you got to leave the streets alone, man. There's, there's no way to mix the two. It's not. Because that shit will catch up with you. Yeah, that that man, yeah, I ain't gonna lie, bro. That's the first person that I interviewed and they passed away like right after I interviewed. And I was like, damn, like Yeah. Yeah, that 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 was a trip, bro. Rest in peace, Chuck Trill. Rest in peace, Chuck. Donnie Houston. Donnie Houston. Donnie Houston. Donnie Houston.